And first of all, I just want to thank uh, Hiro and Kiyosuke for, for inviting me to Tokyo to speak to you guys about what we're doing uh, at Vida Dao and pushing uh, human lifespan as long as we want to. So um, a bit about myself. Uh, I'm from Singapore. It's my first time in Tokyo, actually. So um, I feel right at home, very similar to, to Singapore. And um, I am working on governance in Vida Dao. So I basically help with um, you know, coordinating the humans in Vida Dao to push towards uh, funding research in longevity. Um, and I've been doing it for about nine months now. So uh, I joined last year in August um, and we successfully raised our uh, fundraising round just a few months ago uh, with, with Pfizer leading the round and also you know, notable angel investors like uh, Vitalik and uh, Balaji. So I, I know this week, especially being a, a crypto week in Tokyo, uh, a lot of people are throwing around, you know, the words DAO and Ethereum and crypto, but what actually is a DAO? So uh, DAO stands for a decentralized autonomous organization. And I think uh, a, little, a little secret for, that I want to share with you in all the DAOs in the space is I don't think any DAO right now is 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 either uh, decentralized or autonomous or even organized. Uh, we're 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 all moving towards that that mission, but in each of these facets, I think we're progressively taking our time and iterating as we go on. Um, and so that's the goal that I'm as as far as the governance as a governance lead. This is my goal to move towards that um, purely autonomous organization. Um, and one thing about uh, Vida Dao, especially, it's, it's community governed. So you finally have your say in how you want your research funded and how you want a funding, a scientific funding research organization to work. Um, it's formed around the culture that we form at Vida Dao. So I think we're really lucky at Vida Dao to have uh, a lot of people in crypto and a lot of people in longevity. Um, it's a very nice mix of people who enjoy crypto that also want to live longer. Um, so that really helped us in our product market fit. And it's also very diverse and unique. We have a lot of contributors in, uh, the, in Europe, in Africa, uh, in the US, Canada, uh, Singapore, and even Japan. So, um, and also I, that my mission is to basically enable uh, optimize human coordination. Uh, I think I think um, it's very hard when people are all over the world in different time zones to work towards a deadline, especially if we have a framework or rules that keep on changing. So that's my my mission at, at Vida Dao. So I wanted to move into what, how do I govern Vida Dao? How does it work? Because in a traditional company, we have rules and uh, regulations and a framework, so it's easy. It's easy. Everything works. Everything is fast. But in a DAO, it's very different. Um, everything is changing all the time, and people want it to work their way. My, some people might disagree. Some people might agree. So at Vida DAO, we have a governance token. Um, and basically, the more tokens you have, the more voting power you have. Um, I, for one, want to play around with this uh, voting system because I think it's very easily gamed. If, you, if you're rich enough and you buy enough tokens, you can govern the whole of Vida Dao, which I think is not, it's not a great, um, it's not a great voting um, method and I want to change that. Uh, so some of the experiments that I want to test, something like quadratic voting where the amount of tokens that you have, um, if you have a, a lesser amount of tokens, it would weigh more into a decision. Um, so, and, and right now our governance is phasic. So we have three different phases. The first phase is that if you have an idea, you can check it with the community if people want to pass it, like sort of a temperature check. 
and then it moves to phase two where people vote on it to see if it goes on chain. And then the third one is obviously where people use their tokens to, to vote on whether they see your proposal as good enough for the DAO to implement. Um, and then the second point there about whales, so that, that was what I was talking about, how people can just come in and just buy a bunch of tokens and govern the, the DAO however they want to, and I want to mitigate that. Um, some, an, an interesting uh, experiment that we've tried with Vita DAO is to shield voting. So kind of like a election, when you vote, no one can see your vote until it finishes. Um, that's created some very interesting uh, uh, participation between the whales and also the rest of the community. So you can see people are voting a lot more honestly um, because people can't see your vote. So that's been an interesting uh, development within the DAO. And also, it's also um, encouraged more people to vote because you don't have to, if you see a bunch of people voting to disagree, you're, you might want to also vote disagree because you know it's passing. But if that's shielded, you might vote to what you, how you actually feel. Um, and another experiment that we're doing is seasonal governance. So a problem in DAOs is that we have a lot of proposals. People like to propose a lot of stuff. And then when it passes, um, there's no follow up sometimes. So with seasonal governance, we time lock these things in a year. Um, so the first, the first four months will be, sorry, the first, um, yeah, the first month will be people who are, if you have an idea, you can push forward to the DAO and people will vote on it. And then the other, the next six weeks will be purely for executing the proposal. And then seasons go across in times like this. Um, so that the DAO knows that whatever you've proposed, you've executed, and also you're also um, encouraged to actually execute what you want to do. Um, so, so some of the other experiments that I want to test is like to try out different tooling to help coordinate these people to better. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot in the crypto space now, and finding the right one is almost impossible. But you just have to test it out. And I think also having the um, the option as VitaDAO as sort of my my platform to test all these things um, is definitely a, a privilege. Um, and also to automate more. So like how I said, uh, a, a decentralized autonomous organization. It's not. I feel like VitaDAO is not very automated right now. Um, and I want to create leverage what we have like smart contracts. Um, to execute funding um, instantly as soon as a proposal is passed, a research team can get their funds instantly um, without having to wait for the team to get back to them, what's your address, you know, what's your bank account, something like that. And delegation as well. So for me, um, I'm no scientist. I, I studied science in university, but uh, I, I, don't, I don't know much about the, the intricacies of longevity science. I, I'm more so interested in the DAO space. And sometimes with longevity funding proposals, I'm not sure what's really going on. And I want to delegate, I want to give my voting power to someone who has, who actually knows what this funding proposal is about so that they would make a more informed decision for the DAO. So that's something I also want to test where if you're not sure about what the proposal is about, you can put your, your tokens into someone who might. Um, and that way we can um, more we can we can do it uh, a lot more intelligently passing proposals. So I also wanted to highlight that governance is very different from governments. I think um, I think governments think think of it. So I, I went to a, a a conference the other day, Dow Tokyo. A very very good conference ho hosted by uh, Fracton Ventures as well, and um, on one of the panels, uh, one of the panelists was talking about a garden that he used to work at. So, as a government, if you have a public garden in your neighborhood, everything is kept, everything is maintained for you. You just go there, you can you can sit down. The grass is always cut. You know the fish are happy. The pond is clear things like that. But governance 
is coming together, your community, your neighborhood has to maintain the, the garden themselves. They have to cut the grass. They have to make sure the fish are, are, are you know, in clean water and everything is clean and everything is um, perfect how you want it, right? So it's very different. People want um, an organization that fits them, but then they run into the problem where no one wants to do the work. So I think that's very important. Um, you have to do the work. And I think uh, with, with DAOs, we can use smart contracts to automate this work. If we could put out a smart contract to cut our grass every week, that would be amazing. Then we don't have to get someone to always take out time to cut our grass for us. Um, and yeah, like I said, as a contributor, you always you, you get to build and propose your own frameworks. Um, but I think it's important that with every idea needs to come execution. And um, one thing that the Vita DAO community is really good at is helping whoever wants to propose um, ideas with executing it. Um, and it's also important that we iterate it with the community. So it's never, anything is never set in stone. You can always change it whenever you want to, but the community has to vote on it. It has to be passed. Um, so my ultimate goal for governing VitaDAO is to, is to establish a structure that embodies our culture, the mix, the diverse community that we have who's interested in longevity, who's interested in DAOs, who's interested in the values behind crypto. Um, I think it's important to, to help everybody's ideas into how to fund more scientific research. Um, so I also want to contribute back to, to DAO research um, for how I coordinate a DAO, just like how people, you know, contribute to scientific research and put it on, uh, you know, journals like Nature and Science. But I don't think anyone wants to govern their DAOs like Nature and Science. Because especially for peer review, um, these journals, they decide what is publishable. I'm sure, you know, many scientists in the room here go have, have gone through this problem and then they use, they have the big money and scientists don't get a piece of it. Uh, the, the amount of times that I have gone onto a, you know, research gate to look at a, 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 a journal uh, publication, I'm always hit by, you have to pay $20 a month. I hate that. <laughs> and I don't know why some of that money is not going to the researchers themselves. Um, so reviewers, reviewers themselves are not compensated either. Like, you know, you go, you, you vet these, these journals for them and then you don't get compensated in a way that you want to, which I don't think it's very fair. Um, and there's also statistics to show that, you know, peer review is not even performing that well. So, um, I, I'm sure, you know, Hero also touched, touched a little bit on this about how, you know, um, about rep, uh, the, the problems with um, replication in, in science. And, and I think one thing that I realized across a problem that we're trying to solve at VitaDAO is that academics, scientists in the space spend most of their time writing grant proposals rather than actually doing their research, which I think is, is, is crazy to, for, for me to even think about, you know, like um, that's one of the things personally that stopped me from going to, to school to, you know, I did my bachelor's and I, I love science but I never really went further on because I knew my times would, would be wasted and I know the, the incentives weren't strong enough for me to do so. Um, so these, these stats were concerning and something that we wanted to do at VitaDAO is to help people at the very early stage for whatever research ideas that they want in longevity science to get their funds and try something moonshot. And if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't, it's okay. We learn from that, the DAO learns from that as well. Um, yeah, it, 10 to 30% of grants are su successful, which is, which is insane. And we're trying to change that. Um, so like I said, some of the problems with, with centralized science is that it's been, it's become stagnant, you know, incentives are misaligned. Uh, it's not very transparent. It's slow. It's very expensive. Um, you know, funding is very risky. Uh, the, the gatekeepers, uh, the, 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 the journals, which we don't like, um, and um, VitaDAO is trying to change these by using blockchain mechanisms. So I think 
we don't throw in blockchain and crypto into anything. We, I feel like anyone who's doing a project likes to use these buzzwords, but I think it's the values behind blockchain that we want to bring to science, the transparency, the accountability, the smart contracts, the, the instant execution of things, the automation of science. So creating better incentive mechanisms for the people who actually do science, not the people who push it out for people to look at. Um, you know, publishing as open source, so we don't have, so we don't get stuck behind paywalls anymore, and we can read the journals that we want to read. Um, and in that way, people work together and not compete together, and we we push towards you know accelerating scientific discovery, which we all want. I mean, I personally uh, want to live to 120 years old, but I want to be healthy doing it. So, um, if we can all work together to discover the science behind that, I think that would be brilliant. Um, and and Vida Dao, uh, we're we're very lucky to be to be you know one of one of the popular ones. But the the, the ecosystem is huge, and um, there are tons of DAOs in the space that are working on their very uh, their very interesting niches to to create uh, more incentive uh, alignment for these different communities. So for me, I personally enjoy uh, longevity. Uh, I've always been a person who loves to, you know, biohack and, you know, uh, sleep well, uh, you know, make sure I shower with hot water before I sleep, things like that, you know, small things like that. So for me, I was very interested in Vida Dao when it was introduced to me uh, naturally. And I was already in the crypto space, so I was like, wow, these things, are, it's a perfect marriage for me, so I went into it. But whatever your interest is, there's tons of DAOs out there that you can contribute to. Um, and also communities that you can part of. So I'm I'm really proud to say that you know I'm really uh, I'm I'm really blown away by by the Japanese community in in, in DSI. Um, so I I host the DSI Singapore event, and um, you know we're a bit smaller <laughs> in terms of population, but uh, you know the the turnouts are not like this. So you know kudos to that. And uh, I know Hiro touched on this too, that there are alternative ways of funding science. You know, it should be easy, it should be quick, like I said. Um, impact DAOs like us and biotech DAOs like hair DAO, uh, Athena DAO, working on, you know, uh, hair loss, uh, working on female reproduct reproductive systems. Um, these, are, these are different DAOs that you could be part of depending on your interests. Um, IP NFTs is something that we want to, is, is the basis of where the DAO earns its revenue. And for the DAO to, to earn uh, uh, revenue, if these uh, biotech spin outs commercialize, all that research money goes back into funding more science. So it's completely nonprofit for Vita DAO. Um, and we're also thinking of fractionalizing IP for our community members so that if you participate, in funding these proposals for Veda DAO, you might you can get to own a bit of the IP as well um, for any for any biotech spin out in longevity that commercializes, you will have IP for it. So Gitcoin um, was one of the first supporters that we had for Veda DAO that uh, you know funded our first first trench of money to get our first project. So we're very really thankful for that. Um, Retroactive funding is something really interesting. So think of it as a way where you propose something, you do the work, and then you get funded only after your work is done. So that it has pros and cons to that because different things need money immediately, different things you can um, fund after. But I think the premise to that type of funding is that it's easier to fund things that work rather than fund it and pray that it works. So, um, and also we also have, you know, fast grants, like these are a bit smaller checks, but any any ideas that you have, you know, um, we can just fund them. Like we have, Vida Dao has a fellowship for young researchers to explore um, every year. Um, and these are really small checks from, you know, 1,000 to 10,000 USD and it's just for them to just explore the space, explore Web3, explore longevity in any way that they want to. 
So the big question is, can crypto fund science? Um, there's a lot of money in the world now, um, but it's, it's hard that uh, researchers don't see it. So I think crypto is a way that we earn, we, we own that money and we, we, we see different incentive uh, alignments towards uh, uh, funding science and, and the R&D funding of nation states. So I think with, with a market cap like that, some of, some of our, you know, even 1% even of that going to science can be a lot more beneficial than the money that's being gatekeeped by all these organizations right now. Um, so yeah, so uh, we, we touched a bit on this, like reproducibility through transparency. So I was talking about the, the values behind blockchain. I think one of them is, is transparency. Uh, right now, uh, everyone on the blockchain is kind of uh, swimming naked. Like you can see any, whatever, whatever anyone is doing, which is a good thing and it can also be a bad thing, but the good for science is that if we could stall, if we, if we could store all our data on chain, our code on chain, our journals on chain, it can always be seen, it will be immutable, no one can take them down. Um, and you could share it with anyone anywhere in the world. So uh, also fixing peer review with with fair rewards. So VitaDAO is doing uh, something where we call the uh, longevity peer review system. Uh, specifically for longevity if you review some of our journals you get incentivized in the vita dao governance token so we're, we're already trying small ideas on how these things work kind of like bounties so and yeah so i think i think one thing to think about like how i showed you the the ecosystem of dsi now um it's mostly so the one the the it's mostly um populated by biotech DAOs. Um, but I think there's a lot more space for other types of science. Um, so a, a, a question, I guess, that we could you know, talk about after is how do we fund these other disciplines? Um, because I think I, I might be more interested in, in something that, you know, um, it's, uh, it's outside of biotech, but how do we do that? Yeah, so uh, you know, I hope I hope uh, the, the talk today was you know I tried to touch a bit on how our DAO is governed, what Vita DAO does, why DSI is important, not only for for people who are interested in crypto but who are interested in science, and I can't do it alone. So let's let's build you know the DSI ecosystem together. If you would like to join Vita DAO. If you would like to join as a contributor, you can talk to me. If you have any questions about longevity science, I'll try my best. Um, if you have any questions about how our DAO works, how you can get involved, um, you know, you can always find me on Telegram or Twitter, or even just come to talk to me. I'll be here till lunch. Um, or scan our QR code to check out our website. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much. Thank you.